Hi everybody. So here we are on the 19th of June. Did we ever think we'd get here? I miss you all. I've seen many of you on screen, but it's not the same. I think we're all getting weary of this remote working. But don't get me wrong. It has its advantages and it was the only way to work over the last three months. But one does miss the face-to-face -face human contact. Having said that, it's not a great achievement that we completed out this semester of teaching, ran the exams and produced a set of student results. Please accept my heartfelt thanks on behalf of the students for making your contribution to this happening. It's no mean achievement. In fact, it's an amazing achievement. You all, academic staff and professional management and support staff from across the Institute have been true public servants during these times and have done your best for the students. It's a real duty of care that you have shown, so thank you. A particular shout out for the heads of department who have encouraged and supported staff throughout these times and worked tirelessly in the interest of students. What a year this has been. You often hear the word unprecedented mentioned, but never has it been more appropriate, appropriately used than in 2020. As difficult it has been, we have much to look back on for this year. IT Sligo's ambition to become a technology university was boosted with a very significant meeting of all the three institutes uh, governing bodies from the Connacht Ulster Alliance. We, they met in Donegal Town and made a commitment to the Department of Education and Skills to make a submission to become a technology university in autumn 2020 and we're still working towards that deadline. We were visited by the Minister to celebrate our very successful Science Week and to discuss our TU ambitions our on, of online learning and apprenticeships. Many of our staff and students have been recognised on national and international levels. Our colleague Dr Umar Khan was recognised as one of the top 1% of researchers in the world. So we're truly behaving and acting like a university. Right in a literature lecture, Una Mannion received a major book publishing deal. And recently Dr Marion Dowd co-authored an incredible paper on the latest discoveries of our ancestors which was made international news and was published in Nature. How many people have publications in Nature? It's wonderful. We held our largest graduation ceremony ever with 1,700 students taking part. It also included the first graduates of our insurance apprenticeship and the highest number of PhD students graduating in one year. Our executive became gender balanced for the first time and steps towards a more Equal working place was taken with the Athena Swan survey that you all completed earlier this year. And that will become our roadmap for the future. We announced an 18.3 million investment under Project Ireland 2040 for the extension to the IT Sligo campus. And meanwhile, construction on Block L and Block K continued to progress. We have announced many new courses at all levels over the past academic year which will attract more students to the Institute, hopefully. The IT Sligo's Bachelor of Arts degree in social care practice has become the first higher education provider in Ireland in the IoT sector to receive accreditation by the professional regulatory COLU body. Higher Education for All has been launched and this will enable people with disabilities or health issues or carers to complete degrees uh, degree level programs without having to come to the campus. At the start of 2020, we launched our 50th anniversary celebrations with plans to hold many events throughout the year. Among the events are Northwest were the Northwest Engineering Fair, which was attended by over 2,000 people. This would be our last public event on the campus. Within weeks, our world was turned upside down. On the 12th of March, Antishuk announced all campuses would shut down from 6 p.m. that evening. Within hours, we had to organize and agree how we would shift from class-based teaching to remote learning. And as a team, we moved swiftly, packed our belongings and changed how we would work overnight. It wasn't easy 
and I thank all of our colleagues, all of you and students for the flexibility, the resilience and the determination to keep moving during this unprecedented time. Not only do we continue to work under very difficult circumstances, but we support each other throughout. And right up to these days, I must acknowledge the staff in business who ran a training webinar to help small businesses to get back quickly to work and to adapt to a more digital market out there. Mary McGuckin is moderating a webinar next week on opportunities in tourism and trade, which is such an important part of the economy of the Northwest. We really need people to come here and please take your holidays here this summer. And yesterday, Yada had its online launch of its creative show yearbook. Take some time to look over this. The work is outstanding and really shows that we're already working at a university level. And while we stopped producing face shields after we made it 12,000 of them, uh, as the HSE located a, a more commercial supplier, the ventilator project still continues and testing of reagent uh, is produced as requested by the hospital. It's been an incredible year, a year during which we were supposed to celebrate our 50th anniversary and now has become the most historic year in the Institute's history in many ways. Next year will be another roller coaster for us. COVID will still be with us, social distancing will be in place, and we have no idea if and when the second wave will hit. Again, many of you and your union representatives have been involved in one way or another in planning for the restart of work and on the task force looking and preparing for teaching and learning next year. The opinions of the experts on the future changes weekly and the national public health guidelines are still evolving. So developing plans to start in September is like trying to stand on shifting sands. Your contribution and perseverance with the planning therefore is much appreciated and thanks for, for bearing with us on this. Declan Flavin and the Back to Work team have written the protocols for returning to work on campus based on the national guidelines. Please read through these and complete them if you are coming back on campus to work. They require a once-off signing by yourself and your line manager. As I said on other occasions, the primary objective here is on the health and safety of staff and students. So that's, that's our basis for people coming back on campus. We received good news over the last week we won 635 springboard places, the highest number ever. And the online applications are up beyond expectations. So that bodes well for the future. The hard work of the heads of department, the programme boards in developing and offering these courses and of Jean Gilligan and Col in managing springboard has all paid off and thank you for that. In all of this, I must acknowledge the tremendous work done by Rosie and the marketing team and by Aidan Hohey to promote our various programmes on social media, on radio, in the newspapers and through virtual open days. It's made a huge difference to the reputation and the awareness of IT Sligo. Given the shifting uncertainty about next year, it's not possible for us to confirm final teaching allocations for next year at this time. However, let me assure academic staff that the heads of department are conscious of this and are working to give clear indications about what people will be doing next year. Each programme board is deciding what is the optimum way to ensure how the learning outcomes will be achieved. Consideration has also been given to having a level of on-campus student presence so that they can get that extracurricular experience of being a third level student while maintaining social distance. As yet, we don't know how this will be achieved, but we're working with the Students' Union on this. We are also aware that there are challenges for staff in returning to work. Given childcare, minding, uh, childcare considerations and minding vulnerable people responsibilities, not to mention minding yourselves. So all that has to be taken into consideration. We can't plan for each of you uh, regarding your circumstances. So can I ask that everyone with 
uh, difficulties or anticipated difficulties to work about coming back on campus to talk to their line managers in the first instance and to HR about how we can manage this together. Our academic colleagues are finishing up on the 20th of June. We wish you bon voyage to wherever you're taking your holidays, be it out farm for the brave or in the back garden and with the flowers uh, and your, your digging. Enjoy the break, the rest and re-energizing yourselves. And for those of us who remain and who are preparing for everyone's return next year, I ask you also, our professional management and support staff, to take a break over the summer. It's somewhat quieter time of the year and it's important to step away from your work and give yourselves time to recenter and recharge. In fact, it's essential. We all need a break. So thank you all for the huge step up this year. Get yourselves away from the screen, the laptop, and the intensity of work for a while and refresh and reinvigorate. And take a holiday in Ireland. Ireland needs the money. Hospitality and tourism has suffered already this year. Let's put a bit back into the economy as best we can and enjoy ourselves and hope the, the summer comes back for us. Thank you all. Have a great summer.